through 13 that uh, the um, cancer situation really became public and, and uh, as, as I recall, I'm going by memory here, that, that was the first posting where mom made the allegation. Uh, and throughout the year, um, she brought forth the story that the child was declining in health and at one point this spring to the point where she had been declared terminal. Um, throughout the whole period, as the county attorney said, community I'm proud to be part of this community this com this isn't the first time this community has stepped up for people we do it for everybody and uh, I don't think the hearts of the people of this community are going to be hardened by it I think everybody's hurt right now but everybody's going to heal did you donate I did matter of fact my wife had cancer last year and so we're pretty pretty invested in the situation All the uh, medical appointments were reportedly to Omaha, Des Moines, Columbus, Missouri, things of that nature. Uh, that's part of what brought this to light is when the uh, school system started looking to create a plan for this child, uh, the medical contacts just weren't panning out. And that's when they brought it to the attention of law enforcement. So that's where the break came much yeah any 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 light shed on why she did it for the money thing one may never know at this point our job is to make sure that the children are safe obviously was chief and I've discussed one would have strong concern for the children that would be something that would be part of the criminal prosecution perhaps come out it may come out it may not there may be something come out and there may never be we can't speculate into that at this point in time. Our focus has been ensuring that the children are safe, all of the children, that especially Riley is no longer exposed to this and can be ensured a, a proper safe home where she's getting uh, medical treatment for any ramifications or effects of that. Again, that's yet to be determined. But uh, at this point in time, there's really no way to speculate into that. Is mom sticking to her story? Mom has provided the information which I previously stated, which was that uh, the child did not have this terminal illness and that it was all, uh, in essence, a ruse, if you will, on her part. Does she have any history, Mr. Feisner? To yeah, we have no, I have no information to, no criminal history or to relate to that at, at all. And speaking of money, will any of it, what's left, will that have to be confiscated or able to stay with them? We have certainly looked at that, and that, again, is going to be a concern. Uh, it may be difficult, if ever, to determine how much money was ever brought in. Certainly, it came in cash, it came in checks, it came in uh, different means, perhaps paying for gas, trips, stays at hotels. It, we may never be able to determine the full amount. Uh, we do have some cash on hand. Those That cash has been in a local bank, and that money has been, at least for now, uh, put on hold until we can make a determination what, if anything, to do with that money. That does create, though, a, a certain other problem as to what to do with those monies. People have donated those, they've given up cash, checks, etc. And how do you determine what, if anything, A, to do with the money and, and how could you ever return it? But if then it is ultimately seized or forfeited or in some way, how then is that money uh, finally distributed and what's to be done with that? So that's, again, another issue which will be dealt with in this criminal matter. Would you be looking at maybe theft charges or anything like that in relation to, to taking the money unlawfully? Certainly possible. I mean, fraud, theft, I think there are other possible charges. It's difficult to give you exact charges at this time because of the nature and the manner in which this has developed. It's developed very quickly. Uh, we have spent a lot of time, and again, I want to credit the Atlantic Police Department, Chief Green, and, and uh, Sergeant Paul Wood for spending lots of hours on this as well as all the support staff because again this has been within the 20, last 24 hours that uh, we've had to deal with the obvious shock of it but then be able to proceed in, in our roles which is now what do we need to do which is started with the criminal charges that we had and then looking at any possible others down the road.
the child depending. child show signs of, of the cannabis oil or blood test or THC or anything like that or there was a presence of THC in the child that's correct other than a trip to Disneyland were there any purchases Disney made World. yeah Disney World excuse me that were made by the family that may have stood out like a sore thumb saying they're using these funds for any purposes other than her medical treatments well I think Rick it brings up an issue and we've talked about this it's difficult when you have these situations in these communities. I know that there are agencies that many times will receive these funds and be the manager of them. Um, they may act in a role that verifies the and validifies the injuries and or illnesses of many people. We've seen it for adults and children. And then there are agencies and entities that then will assist in the management. So those agencies were not involved here. And I, to my knowledge, there's no requirement of it, but uh, so, She has been seen by the magistrate on at least the initial charge and a bond has been, I believe, withheld initially pending the second charge again. The magistrate has both charges now and will be setting bond. And after that, the defendant will have, uh, Ms. Lawson will have a... Are you able to say who's interviewing dad at all or...? Again, we have done that. We have already interviewed the father. We have conducted some preliminary and follow-up investigations and interviews of the father. He has been fully cooperative as to his knowledge of these events. He had to be floored, wasn't he? The father was definitely, um, I can say, very upset with this and uh, personally struggling, if you will, with how to then proceed in his life as well as uh, help the children, of course. I think that's correct, yes. Did the father believe that his child had cancer? I, I can't state what the father believed. I can just state that he cooperated and has, was upset with his reaction seemed to indicate that, at least initially, that he was not aware of what the mother was perpetrating. So I take it she was getting ready to go to kindergarten and so the school just needed to right. figure right. out how they handle her from class to class and then they raised the red flag, but nothing had come up before that, right? No. This, is, this would have been her kindergarten year, so she hadn't actually been involved in the Atlantic school system until then. Will the mother have to undergo a, health, a mental health evaluation? Is there any consideration by Munchausen by proxy on this at all? Well, I think certainly any time something like this happens, a uh, person's mental illness would be a consideration. And if not through the criminal matter, then perhaps through a civil matter at this time. Uh, to my knowledge, she is not uh, being examined for anything of that nature, but it's not to say that she may not be in the future. We certainly do, there's no question. We have concerns for all the children. We have concerns for their immediate short-term mental health, their immediate short-term physical well-being, their, their long-term mental health, and their long-term physical well-being, specifically Riley's, not knowing uh, what impact or effects this drug, uh, as well as any others that may have been involved here, may have had upon her. So that's why we felt it's so imperative that we get her examined, but again, corporally, corporally for all children of this, all five children, that's our concern. What's the age range? She has an older brother that's <coughs> nine years of age, and uh, I don't, the others are uh, in the younger sibling area. And she's in the middle, or she's the youngest? Yeah, well, no, she's She's not the youngest. I think she's maybe second youngest, possibly. Riley's 2009, her birth year. Looks like uh, another sister, 2010, brother, 2012, and a sister, 2006. Riley's birth year is 2009, a sister of 2006, 
brother 2003, sister 2010, and their brother 2012. All siblings, a total of five, thank you. Anything else? She knows she doesn't have cancer now. She's been told that. She believed it, and now she knows she's okay. Well, we don't really want to comment on that. Obviously, as we stated earlier, there are going to be considerations for her mental well-being and how to handle that. So we're hopeful that however this proceeds, that we can seek the best treatment for the family, mental health treatment for the family, and the Department of Human Services will be cooperating with that. Um, I, I don't really want to comment on what she knows or doesn't know and how, how Riley is handling it. 